Our next um, speaker is Nasaret Seferian, um, which is a perfect, um, your presentation was a perfect segue to our next speaker because he's speaking from Orange Armenia, which is one of our mobile phone um, uh, services providers here in Armenia. And he's the corporate social responsibility and philanthropy expert at Orange Armenia. So um, Nasaret, if you can um, come over here, I'd, we're really <laughs> interested to hear what you have to say and how we're using SMS. Thank you. Uh, a couple of words in Armenian, but I'll be speaking mostly in English. Mi-chin hayerin bar mod mekuk es ankam aveli erkar ekan anglerena. Hashvi arnele vor jamin nant kese zud jamanaki nekatarun nero vangderen khosem. Vor nuin kan informasyon karawana maveli kis jamanakum zez hastnel. Yete hartel nemi ban haskan li chelni khantrum mentatek khortsem aveli parzasel. When the uh, evening began, I was a bit. Uh, feeling a bit overwhelmed and uh, having all these complexes come up uh, within me because uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is a bit more old school than things like Ushahidi and all the other things that were covered uh, before. But Dahlia uh, really did set me up perfectly in the sense that uh, she talked about SMS and a lot of what I'm going to talk to you about today is going to be SMS. Uh, but mainly the central theme of my topic, there are two, uh, I'll mention one at the end, but the first one is to show you how a corporation, how a company can be part of social good and how a company can be an active part of trying to make a change in the country or countries where it does business. Um, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is a very person-to-person -person, um, sort of initiative that we've been doing at Orange Armenia, which is ending today. It's been going on for a week. It's called the Orange Volunteering Week, which has been going on in uh, 16 countries around the world where Orange operates, including in Armenia for the first time. And our employees have been going out to different organizations and doing different things, including social media trainings, internet skills trainings, and so on. And this is unique to uh, Armenia currently because we've had lots of companies do things like tree planting, cleaning up the streets, and things like that, which is good. But we've actually gone out and asked organizations what they need. And as a communications company, our employees are doing their best to, to meet those needs. And interestingly, we've also used um, some of the latest technology, Skype for example, we have an, had an employee who is expecting a baby and did not want to travel or rather could not travel, could not risk traveling three hours to Noemberian from Yerevan, but she's helping a women's organization in Noemberian through Skype, uh, helping them set up a newsletter. So just an example of uh, how these tools are on the one hand being taught by regular people like you and me and companies in Armenia and how they are helping us work with regular people uh, throughout Armenia. Now a couple of specific projects I want to talk to you about focus around SMS. And uh, in countries like uh, Armenia, like Palestine, where internet penetration still has some ways to go, but SMS is already there, it's a perfect tool to do some of the things that we want to do. Uh, one project which we are involved in, which was set up by the US Peace Corps and the Armenian Red Cross Society last year, is an SMS helpline for HIV AIDS. Now, as many of you may or may not know, in Armenia there has been a telephone hotline for HIV AIDS for uh, a long time, but it hasn't been very popular, and there are a number of reasons why. Armenia is one of the risk countries for HIV AIDS in the sense that the rate of infection is increasing. There are still very few people who are infected. The registered number is around 700 or 800 people who are officially diagnosed with an HIV infection. Many people believe that the real number in Armenia is about 10 times that, so 7,000 or 8,000. And of course, the social taboo is a very important factor, plus the uh, seasonal migration. So many Armenians go to countries like Russia and Ukraine to, to get a job, and they come back from there with more than just a little cash in their pockets. And this spreads among their family and friends, uh, or let's say family and social relations in Armenia as well, and people don't want to talk about this. So with this SMS uh, HIV AIDS hotline, that we help set up. Uh, there is an SMS uh, number, 6428, that any subscriber, any Orange subscriber can send a free SMS to. And the volunteers at the Armenia Red Cross Society uh, receive those SMSs and they have a database of uh, standard answers. If there are any non-standard questions, those go to the National uh, AIDS Center where an expert doctor uh, fills in the answers and sends them back to the volunteer at the Red Cross who sends it on to the subscriber all within 24 hours, at least that's the target. This was set up uh, at the end of October last year, 
and uh, amazingly, un until the end of the year, so uh, in a little over two months, 12,000 SMSs were sent to this number, with more than 95% of these SMSs being relevant to the topic and asking one very simple question. Where can I get tested for HIV in Armenia? SMS is perfect because it keeps the privacy of the individual concerned. You text, you can delete the SMS afterwards. You receive an SMS, you can delete the SMS afterwards. If you live in a one-room apartment with your family, you can't pick up the phone and call the HIV AIDS hotline and ask them your question verbally. But you can text and you can get the answer without a uh, huge risk of your little secret being uh, open to the, to the family and to the public. Um, so that's one example of using SMS for social good, a health-related example. The other one I want to give you is a project that we're very much trying to promote now. We set up uh, on the 1st of June with World Vision, which we call our SMS charity project. And the current theme for one year is let's keep children at home. So I'm sure you know better than me. Many families uh, in Armenia, in Yerevan, mostly outside Yerevan, have a number of children, three children, four children, five children, some of these families. And many of them, due to purely financial reasons, have to hand one or more of these children to a state institution, to an orphanage or to any other institution where that child is given state care and cannot grow up in the family, purely for financial reasons. World Vision has a whole database of these families and works closely with them. But uh, the project that we set up along with them is to allow our subscribers to donate a small amount of money to help these families. We set up two numbers, 1234 and 5678. If you send a blank SMS to 1234, you donate 100 drams. If you send one to 5678, you donate 500 drams. And uh, the Orange Foundation then doubles this money. Most importantly, we're not giving these families a handout. World Vision is using this money to create a sustainable, a stable source of income for these families. So for example, the family that was the support, uh, the, the beneficiary of our uh, SMS charity project in June, uh, the father is a mechanic, and he works at other people's garages. So with this money, World Vision is setting up a garage for him in his home, in his yard, which will allow him to have a larger profit margin, to make more money, and to bring back uh, his daughter, his 15-year-old daughter, from the state institution uh, that he, handed, he was forced to hand her to. The family that will receive the um, donations from July will get a, um, um, a machine, a tractor, which can uh, plow, uh, clean soil, clean snow, and they can work on other people's fields and make money and bring their two children who they have been forced to give to a state institution back home. So we're not giving a handout. These families are willing to work. They just need a small helping hand, a micro grant, you could say. And after that, they can do the rest on their own. And it's our subscribers who are the driving force of this project. They donate the money. We double it, but they are the ones who are the, the driving force. So it's a bit like uh, Kiva, a bit like Indiegogo, a bit like uh, uh, Kickstarter, which were mentioned earlier today, except it's simpler. You do it through SMS. You don't need to have an internet connection. You don't even need to know what the internet is. You need to be willing to donate 100 drams or 500 drams or more. And you need uh, a phone and uh, the, the, the time, a couple of seconds of your, of your life to donate an SMS, donate some money which will support that family and gain stability. Um, so. As I was saying in the beginning of my, of my talk, there are a couple of central themes to, to what I want to say today. One is how can corporations work in communities, work in societies to make a change? How can they be responsible businesses, good corporate citizens? And I hope I gave you a couple of good examples of that. The other central theme is in the end, as I'm sure you've realized from all the other talks today, it's not as much about the technology as it is about the people. It's about you. It's about me. It's about the people sitting in this room today, the people watching online today, the people who are willing to tweet, send an SMS, send uh, something to a piece of information to Shahidi. It's the people that make the technology work, not the, way, not the other way around. So while it's great that we're here talking about uh, technology and social good, the question isn't necessarily how technology and social media can help solve our problems. The question is, how can we solve our problems using technology and social media? Thank you.